In the Norse oceans of old, long sea dragons ruled the waves. They were the Viking longships. The longship was the common warship of the Norse region until the Middle Ages. The Knar, on the other hand, was the merchant version of the longship being shorter and broader to contain more goods. Otherwise, the two ships were of similar build, both being clinker built with the planks overlapping rather than being fitted together as in the carvel built common in the Mediterranean. You see clinker built to the left and carvel to the right. The advantage of the clinker build is that the planks can be thinner, reducing the weight and making it easier to drag over land. It also made the longships and the knars more flexible. The disadvantage was that better quality of timber was needed, but the ready availability of timber in, the, in Northern Europe made up for this. Clinker built also made the ships more narrow, which was great for speed, but meant that less cargo could be carried. The lightness of the ships also meant that they could go into very shallow waters and be dragged between rivers. This was great for Northern Europe, where the water was shallow at the coast outside the Scandinavian peninsula. Also, the many rivers into the European continent could be sailed and the ship dragged between rivers in a world without roads. This is an important ability. Both the long ship and the knar were equipped with a single mast and had a square rig with a sail made of wool. The sail was the main means of propulsion for the merchant knar, while the longship used the sail secondary, with the oarsman being the main propulsion. This is very much like the galleys of the Mediterranean, where the military triremes were also rowed, as I mentioned in my video, how was the ancient Greek trireme constructed. The longship was manned by a chieftain and his men and was a military grouping. The longship was excellent for coastal raids, being able to beach at any coast to attack coastal settlements. This is what the Vikings are known for. In other situations, it was the shorter and broader knar that was used. The narrowness of the longship meant that it could be rowed very fast, fast in, fast out. The knar was not as fast, but could transport more. It was the knar that was used for trade, colonization and exploration. Iceland, Greenland and North America was discovered aboard the knar. Both ships narrowed at both bow and stern, making both ends the same, unlike later caravel type ships. Unlike the trireme or galleys of the Mediterranean, the long ships did not have a ram, they were not made for sea battle. The steering was done with an oar at the stern when using sail and by coordinating the oarsmen when rowing. The hull of the ship was waterproofed with the use of tar, giving the ships their black surface. The tar was made from wood, like the ships themselves, through the process of making charcoal. The longship and knar only had limited maneuverability in the wind and often had to wait for the wind to be 
in the right direction. The ships could easily beach, however, so they did not need to reach their goal too precisely, and because they could sail in extremely shallow waters, they could simply be dragged the last lake of the journey. In the rivers of Central Europe and Russia, rowing and dragging would be the norm when going upstream, and downstream you merely needed to steer as the waters carried you forward. The longship and knar are basically just larger versions of the Norse rowboat with few alterations other than the size. Neither of the ships had any internal compartments, they were open hulls with no protection other than raising some sailcloth like a tent overhead. This cloth was like the sail made of wool. Unlike the Mediterranean trireme, the longships never had more than a single row of oarsmen, but despite it being a simple ship type, it managed to explore the North Atlantic. It also reached deep into the Mediterranean, and even more impressive, sailed deep inland into the core of Eurasia. This single ship type could thus sail both the deep oceans and the continent's interior. What finally brought these ships out of service was their limited ability to carry cargo and they would be replaced by the cock which had much larger cargo capacity but could not reach as far as its predecessors.